In this video, I'm going to give you a one shot so that you can get started running D&D. Hey guys, welcome back to Syndicate's Ethereum. My name is Dylan, your guide here through the Ethereum. If this is your first adventure here and you want to join Syndicate and I as we provide you with everything you need to be a better dungeon master or a better player, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you can stay up to date with both of us. This video is the second video in a series that's all about getting you started running Dungeons and Dragons. If you haven't seen that one, be sure to watch that one first, then come on back over to this video. And just to cover any groundwork, in case there's anyone who doesn't know what a one-shot is, basically just think of a one-off adventure. Beginning to end, everyone's going to have a full and closed story. Could it continue after that? Yes, it more than likely could and will continue. But if it doesn't, this adventure will give you and your players everything you need to have a good time in Dungeons & Dragons or any role-playing game. So the first thing I'm going to give you in this one-shot is the name. The name is the most important thing to any session, any one shot. You want to make sure you name it in a way that gives your players an idea of what's going to happen. Kind of gives them a sense of the theme. And the theme and name of this one shot is Trapped in the Village of Mare Lake. Now, the Village of Mare Lake, how many buildings are there? What's the population like? What is it next to? All you need to know for the essence of this one shot is that on the southern end of town, there's a large lake. What is this place? YouTube.com I'm unfamiliar with this world. Interesting. Let's talk about the background of what's going on before we get into the meat of the adventure. So, in my world, I have this disease called the Drog. I don't want to get into it here as I just want to give you exactly what you need to get started with this one-shot adventure. Think undead or some sort of mutation disease where they make monsters similar to undead. So, this village was attacked by these undead creatures and your party, your adventurers, and the rest of any NPC survivors that are, that are living thus far are all trapped inside a cellar that's in one of the buildings of the village. They've been trapped there for two weeks, maybe more. If you want to give your players an increased sense of dread, just say they've been there for a longer amount of time. The first thing they're going to want to ask themselves is, wait, if we've been here this long, why haven't we tried to escape? Be sure to tell them in the description of what's going on that maybe a few weeks ago, a few days ago, maybe some of the current adventuring, adventuring party, maybe some other people had left to try to escape. You need to make it sound like it didn't go well and that the people that tried to leave more than likely did not survive. At the same time, your players were like, well, if we're safe in here, let's just stick it out. Depending on how long they've been there, two weeks, a month, whichever you prefer, they're running out of food. They only have two days left of food, and that's only if somebody goes without eating. When the adventure begins, your party, as well as any other survivors in, that are left in the village of Mare Lake, are going to be trapped inside of a cellar in one of the buildings. So, What's going on in the cellar to kind of spice things up a little bit? You don't want to just have an empty cellar. If this is their first time playing, they may be a little nervous getting into character or talking to each other as, them, as their characters. So you want to have some NPCs in the cellar just to kind of spice things up and kind of break the ice a little bit. You want to have at least one good line NPC. When I ran this one shot, I had a farmer. It was actually his house that uh, all the PCs, all the survivors were in. So they kind of looked to him, not necessarily as a leader, but it was his house and they kind of respected that in some manner. At the same time, you also want to have some NPC that is antagonistic against the survivors as a whole. The main feature of this basement, of this cellar that the survivors are in, is that there's one unconscious knight that is in the cellar that is actually responsible for keeping everyone alive so far. Basically, think of him as a high-level NPC that when everything went down, he was there to fight off the undead to allow everyone to get into the, into the cellar before he or her went in. Something happened after the, after the doors were locked and the undead had scattered off and he's unconscious and has been unconscious basically since the whole survivors have been down here. Yes, well, the knight was cursed by me. It's a good idea to have an NPC, again, like the former, as I said before, that's friendly and helpful and wants to talk to the, uh, to the characters, be there for them. At the same time, this other NPC, he is not going to like the characters. He's not going to like the fact that they're keeping this, this unconscious knight alive, seeing it as a waste of resources. Now, some of your player characters may agree with him. They may disagree. 
that's up to them. When I ran it, they all seemed better type of people and they wanted to help this guy, this unconscious guy out. Some of my PCs actually forego eating. They didn't take any foods that other, some of the other less fortunate had a chance to eat. And if any of your player characters forego eating so that some of the other NPCs or less fortunate people have a chance to eat, be sure to reward them with inspiration or whatever else it is you use in your game. With the adventurers running out of food, they're going to have to go somewhere. That's whenever you can feed to the party through an NPC or just by telling them that on the southern end of town, on the other side of the lake, there is an old orc outpost that the local kingdom has kind of refurbished in sort of a forward operating base, if you will, for this undead attack. If the party wants to survive, they're going to have to make it that way. The former, the good aligned NPC, is going to ask them to help in carrying the unconscious knight to this outpost as this knight has been gathering information and doing research on the undead, trying to find out what's the source of their power, why have they been attacking the kingdom. Your party's going to have to help them. Or they may not. Depends on, depends on your characters, depends on your friends, depends on their alignment, it, it depends on a lot of things. If they agree to help and carry out the unconscious knight, they're going to need supplies in order to make a stretcher, in order to actually physically carry the unconscious knight out as quickly and quietly as possible. If they carry the unconscious knight on their back or just carrying him, they're going to go slow and the undead are going to have a chance to catch up to them. So, have them look around the town. Have them sneak around the town. What kind of buildings are there? That's up to you. If they say, hey, is there a carpenter shop where we can find wood? Yes, there's a carpenter shop. Hey, is there a cloth maker or some sort of physician's office where we can find something to use to tie the, uh, these boards to in order to make a stretcher hey yeah there's a clothier shop hey yeah there's actually a physician shop be passive in the village don't try to ground it in buildings and whatnot it's just going to bar the game down and remember this is a one shot you're trying to get through this sort of like a movie be kind of give and take in what is in the village when the party is sneaking around the city to find these materials to build a, a gurney for the unconscious knight if they get caught there's going to have to be some fighting going on. I recommend to just have them hold up in a building and fight off a few rounds of undead. Running into a building, trying to attract them all there, fighting some of them off, then looping back around to go to wherever it is they need to go to get the supplies and then make it back to the former's cellar to get everyone out of there to the, to the outpost. When I ran this adventure, the party was actually pretty good on sneaking in and out of the different buildings. They didn't get caught at all. So one thing you want to do to kind of spice things up while this is all happening, have that antagonistic NPC that doesn't like the characters and the survivors, have him walking around town too, to, to, to their surprise. And have him go to the mayor's house or some, some sort of royal house or basically a house that has a lot of money. And he's going to try to go sneak in there and take whatever whatever thing he can whatever he can get his hands on. He's going to try to take it, and that's when things are going to go wrong for him. He's going to screw up. He's going to make some noise, and he's going to have all kind of undead on him, buying the players' characters some time, and maybe even getting them in trouble with some of the undead that they had snuck by before. Okay, so your your player characters have gotten all the supplies they needed to get to the unconscious knight. Now it's time to get the heck out of dodge, get to the outpost, and continue on with the adventure. So, the first encounter was the village of Mare Lake, having them, talk to, having them talk amongst one another, talk to the NPCs, decide to get out of Dodge, to get out of town, and to decide to get the supplies needed in order to get the unconscious knight out and to the outpost. So, the second encounter is going to be the outpost. You can come up with whatever name you want. I named it Gretelkin. Uh, it has something to do with my world. Again, I don't want to get too involved into the homebrew stuff in this video, as this video is just mainly about getting you started with this one-shot adventure. When they get to the outpost, have one of the nobles there, reward them in some sort of way. You can give them a magical items, monetary value. Obviously, don't just give them that if they just ran for, to, to take care of themselves and didn't care about the survivors or whatever. If they brought the knight, the unconscious knight back, be sure to reward them. This is where things shift over to a dungeon crawl style play. The noble is going to thank the party for bringing the unconscious knight back to them. He wants the the noble wants to know what the knight has learned about these undead attacks. So he's going to offer the PCs to traverse to a nearby tomb 
that supposedly has an old shaman that you, that has made a lot of potions throughout the years that most of the people in this kingdom still use to this day. This shaman supposedly has this mystical elixir that no one else has been able to find that is supposedly to cure any sort of ailments. He brings it to the party's attention that if they can bring that back, bring his finest elixir, bring it back to him and save this knight, that he'll reward them even further, giving for them again magic items or money, whatever you think would interest your players most. Again, if you just if you don't offer anything, your players may not be interested in taking on this adventure. Then again, it is a one shot, and everybody came over to play D and D to go on an adventure. So they usually will find a way. At least in my experience, they're not. They won't say no. They know this is a one shot. They know they're here to have fun. They're gonna say yes. They weren't gonna help out this unconscious knight. If they do agree, the noble's gonna give them a key of some kind, whatever sounds interesting to you, in order to unlock this tomb so that they can go and traverse and find this mystical elixir. In this video, I don't want to get in specifics of the dungeon itself. I want to tell you what's in there and I want to empower you to develop it on your own and we can compare, see what what you did versus how I did it and that way you're taking this adventure and you're making it your own just as I did when I ran it. Bring me the elixir and in turn I will cure the curse laid upon the night. I have my own needs for this mystical elixir that does not concern you nor does it concern your Heroes. <laughs> in the tomb itself, there are a lot of sarcophagi of other followers of this shaman that have long since dead. There's an area where the ingredients of the alchemical formula were kept. And being as this place has been untouched for so long, a carrion crawler has made its home here, or whatever monster you would like to use against your party, depending on the level. Carrion crawler has made its home here and is eating all of the old rotten ingredients that were left here so long ago. Also in this dungeon, for any druids or anyone that has proficiency in an herbalism kit, there is a room where they can actually make potions of their own to give to either themselves or to their allies for use in the dungeon. There's also a riddle in this dungeon that the player characters can read in order to get an idea of what happens whenever you try and drink the mystical elixir. And last but not least, there is a hidden ingredient in this dungeon that when mixed with a potion creates the mystical elixir that the characters are looking for. So, just to rehash everything... Does this one ever stop talking? This sounds more like a campaign, not a one-shot. It's foolish. In this one-shot, you have three encounters. And under each of those three encounters, you have one to two what I call scenarios. So, encounter one. The players are trapped in the cellar in the village of Mare Lake. They need to leave and travel to an outpost. It's inclined and asked by the good aligned NPC of the, of the survivors that they take this unconscious knight with them to the outpost that is responsible for helping everyone survive this far and making it to the cellar that they've been hiding out in. With this first encounter, you can have one or two scenarios here. If the players get caught, you're going to have some sort of undead battle. If they don't get caught, have the more antagonistic NPC sneak around some of the other houses trying to steal what he can from the people that are gone and have him get caught and have the players kind of get stuck in the crossfire of trying to sneak again past some of the undead that they had previously snuck by or any new undead that kind of spring to life with the noise of these, again, uh, antagonistic NPC stealing items and whatnot. Now, the second encounter is going to be much more of a conversational one in that they're going to be at the outpost of Gretelkin or whatever you want to name it. They're going to be talking to this noble about this knight. The, the noble wants to know what the knight knows and it's going to encourage the PCs to travel to this old tomb to find this elixir that's, that's going to cure whatever is going on with him. I don't expect this second encounter to take too long. As I said, there shouldn't be any combat here. It should mainly just be com conversations with the noble. And then lastly, the third encounter is obviously going to have multiple scenarios in the dungeon. where you are going to have them fighting a carrion crawler or having them fight whatever else you want to put in there. And also fighting the guardian of the mystical elixir. 
For those of you that made it this far to the video, I want to give you a bonus tip on getting started with your game. It's something that I do with every one shot. It's a little ritual is what I call it. Something that has all of your friends sitting around a table as friends to sit around the table as adventurers. Before I get into it, it may be a little awkward at first. It may be a little uncomfortable if this is your first time doing this, but when once you do it for so long, my friends and I, especially those that have been playing in my games and my one shots for so long, they come to sort of expect it. What I do is I, when we get started playing, I describe the scene. I say, okay, all of you are yourselves. You're not your characters yet. You're still yourselves. You just got into the movie theater. You just got your popcorn. You just got your soda, your candy. You're all sitting down and the lights begin to dim. And as they dim, your eyes kind of are abrazed with this white flash that comes across the screen. And as your eyes sort of adjust, you see yourselves flying over the world, flying across the world into a village. As you get to this village, you see that this village is attacked. It's been ravaged by a war, maybe a battle of some kind. Looking around further as the camera pans across the street, you can see these disgusting undead creatures, some of them holding some sort of humanoid figure to them as the lives that they lived before they were these monsters shamble up and about. As we, as we pan again through the streets, we see the names of the uh, heroes pop up on screen. We see the name of the dungeon master and his dungeon and his production line pop up on the screen. As we come across the cellar door that uh, the camera pans through the cellar door, we see trapped in the village of Mare Lake pop across the screen. As we meet the survivors and those trying to hold on as long as they can from the hell that awaits outside. Again, that was kind of me describing it on the fly, but you get the idea. Or if you don't like the movie idea, come up with something else that kind of gets everybody a little more comfortable into the scene. Especially if they're a new player. This will be sort of uncomfortable for them at first. At least the first maybe the first few minutes or so. Kind of get the get their feet wet, so so to speak. Now, if you want more specifics on the encounters in this adventure, don't worry, as in the next videos in the series, I'm going to break down each encounter individually and go over them in specific detail. I wanted to give you guys an opportunity to empower yourselves as Dungeon Masters, use the information that I'm giving you, and twist and bend it in ways that you like more than what I'm saying. That way you make it your own. Anytime you make something your own as a DM, you're more inclined to remember it as it's all kept up here. You don't have to go back and read it in a notebook. It's just a lot easier, I find. And if this may seem a little complicated, just, just go with the flow. Just get started. Remember, start with what you have. Use this one shot to the best of your ability. Take from it the things that you enjoy most. Throw out the things that I've discussed that you don't like. Be sure to come on back to check out the encounters. Uh, I did run this one shot with some coworkers of mine, most of which have never played ever. This was their first experience, and they all loved it. I'm willing to bet that whoever you put this in front of, they're going to love it as well. If you enjoyed what you learned here today, let your guide know in this comment section. Until next time, guys, I'll see you in the Ethereum. Take care. Peace. Until we meet again, Dungeon Master, I look forward to it. Mm -hmm.